Shanti Feldon, how are you doing? I am good. It's, it's good to be with you. Yeah, it's good to have you back. It's been too long. Uh, now, your husband has written this book with you. Yes. Uh, which is probably appropriate because you're talking about thriving in love and money. And, you know, I'm glad in my relationship with my wife for almost 30 years now, we've got the love. Because Lord knows we don't have the money. <laughs> what's, what's the correlation here? I was here? just going to say, everybody's <laughs> feeling your pain. <laughs> yeah. you got five, cha- five game-changing insights. Yeah. About your relationship and money, because it, money's a big deal in relationships. It's a huge deal. It, it, is, it is one of those things that we've known forever as, I mean, we're relationship researchers, right? And one of the things we've known forever is that money is a huge issue in marriage, mm. right? It's just Jeff and I didn't think that God would ever ask us to study it Ah. (laughs) because we are the furthest thing from money people. And honestly, this was, after all of our studies, this was the one area that we were not on the same page. So we were totally terrified to tackle this topic, honestly. Well, so where he was coming from one position, you were coming from another one? Well, honestly, it turns out we're like most people. It turns out that 77%, that's what we found on the surveys, 77% of couples just can't talk about money without awkwardness, um, defensiveness, getting irritated with each other. In our case, you know, we didn't fight about money. We just sort of avoided it. And Mm. we we tried to kind of do money separately so that we wouldn't fight about it. And that's very common. Now, when you say separately, you're talking like separate bank accounts? It was kind of, we had joint, we had all joint bank accounts. We had all... um, you know, technically, we are on each other's, like, credit cards and right. bank accounts, all that kind of stuff. Right. But it was a lot easier for, like, his paycheck. He just kind of deals with it. And my business, like, I just kind of deal with it. And we just got defensive around this whole topic. <laughs> and it and it turns out that's where most that where people most live. Are. Yeah. And it's we're missing this sort of abundant life and marriage that God has for us. So what did you learn through that process? We actually learned probably the most important big picture truth is that if you're having tension around money, it's not about the money. Really? Yeah. It actually has nothing to do with money, which most people instinctively go, well, I would solve it if I just had more of it. (laughs) Right? Like we wouldn't fight. Yeah. Or it's not a much, it's not a problem. Yeah. And it turns out not true. Not true. Not yeah. true. It, it's actually interesting statistically that the people who have more margin, more, you know, higher income levels are just as likely to have these kinds of clashes hmm. as people who live at a very modest, very modest level. And uh, because it's not about the money, it turns out it's the reason for all of this is it's about how money makes us feel and how it makes our spouse feel. Hmm. And we found, the bottom line is we found that there's five very distinct factors, you might say, that are sort of running underneath the surface. And those expectations and fears and worries and kind of perceptions of how things should operate, turns out that's really what's going on. So let's talk about at least one of those. You yeah. Wanna, you want to go with the most common one or maybe the most surprising one? Sure. Well, probably the most common one because ev- it's what causes people to clash. Yeah. It turns out that one of the biggest things going on is that we don't recognize that we're not valuing what our spouse is valuing. And we should be sort of yeah, a little that. more clued into the fact that, hey, we're different people we might value different things, (laughs) but we don't like, I'll give you, this is a silly example, but the silly examples are what make a life and a marriage and clashes Mm -hmm. over money. Mm -hmm. I mean, silly example, but like Jeff, for example, if the kitchen sink breaks and there's water all over the floor and he's like, Oh, like this is an opportunity for me to try to figure out how to fix it. And for me, I'm thinking, well, we got water spewing out of the faucet. Like, quick, let's call a plumber. Mm-hmm. And it it turns out that those literal and we get he gets irritated, he gets frustrated, I get frustrated, and it turns out that is just a silly example of valuing two completely different things. 
I am valuing sort of security, security. if that makes sense, mm -hmm. sort of I'm valuing kind of doing this quickly and and making and sure right. that we do it right. And this <laughs> right. is my version of right, as he points out. Right. Um, and and Jeff is valuing. I can save money by figuring out how to do this myself. And you know, I'm a. I can I can figure this out. Right. And save a bit of money. And hey, kind of have that like doggone it, I did it. You know, sort right. of thing. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and and the thing is, for me as and this is especially sometimes for me as a wife. This is getting into a little more of the research I did on understanding men <laughs> when I wrote for women only. But I don't realize, like for him, he kind of values being able to figure out I can do it. Sure. Like I can prove myself. Yeah. You need research to tell you that? I know. Believe it or not, <laughs> I did. <laughs> this is this is a common disconnect. Um, but that's just a one day to day example of the fact that you know what? Neither of those things is right or wrong. Mm, they're just different. It, they're that's important. Just different. That's, that's important. Yeah. yeah. They're just, just different. We're we're here to save the day and fix that, and it may take a few days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It, it is it is astounding the sheer number of ways that we are missing what's going on in the heart of our spouse. Mm. Can I give you another example? Please do. This is this is actually a second one of the issues that we found the factors under the surface, is that we're kind of we tend to be worried about and fearful of, um, insecure about two different things. This is, this is actually one of the few areas that there is a statistically a gender difference um, between men and women. And it's not 100%, but we found it was somewhere around 80% of men and women that this applies to. And um, it's being, this is an example of something that's being triggered when I call Jeff on the way home from a long day of meetings, say, and I call him and say, hey, you know what, honey, I'm going to, um, how about I just pick up some Chinese food on the way home, mm -hmm. you know, some takeout. And he goes, ah, oh, like that'll be 35 bucks. And, you know, I have some chicken in the fridge from Costco. That's $12. Why don't I just grill the chicken? Like, why does that bug me? Right. And it turns out that, and I wouldn't have been able to articulate this, but it turns out I'm worried about the fact that we haven't had any time together as a family. And and man, you know, if we grill the chicken, that's going to be like preparation and then it's going to be cooking it yeah. and then eating it and cleaning up. That's an hour right mm -hmm. there. And then we got to start homework and eat 35 bucks to sort of buy a precious hour of family time. Oh, absolutely. In mm -hmm. my mind, that is so worth it. Because it's speaking to an area that I'm very attuned to, which is, are we okay as a family? Like, is everybody feeling loved? Are we together? Yeah. Yeah. And he's feeling, <laughs> if we keep doing this, if we keep buying Chinese food, we're going to be homeless in retirement, <laughs> right? And, and there's a, a need. Um, and this is not just Jeff, actually. This is statistically many men have this constant back of their mind, how am I going to be able to provide for the family? Not just now, but into the future. Yeah. This is like this subconscious thing that is constantly there yep. in the back of their mind. And it's not that women don't think about, you know, providing and money and retirement as well. It's just not as much of a, like, right. we yeah. have to be yeah. careful of this. Mm -hmm. And for men, the family being close, they care about that too, but it's sure. not a worry the same way that it is for women. Right. Yeah. So that's an example. It's a it's a common disconnect. So what's your what's your message? I mean, I'm, I'm gathering that it's learn about yourself, learn about your spouse. Bingo. Listen. Um, yeah. Put these things out there, you know, because the assumption is a lot of times is what's right in front of us. But what you're saying is that the reality is not always seen. Correct. Yeah, the, the most important thing that you can possibly do if you want a great relationship around money instead of the clashing right. or the avoiding, right. the most important thing you can do is actually understand yourself first hmm. 
and recognize, like, I wouldn't have been able to articulate that thing about the Chinese food in the hour of family time. I, mm-hmm. I just was irritated that Jeff didn't want Chinese food, <laughs> you know. Which, and, which would make no sense to him. He's like, what do you like, mean? I'm volunteering mean? to cook for you. Exactly. Right? Exactly. <laughs> what's the problem? And, um, and, and recognizing what's in yourself first. We literally tell people, this is one of the best tools that we've seen, is literally go through, like, if you're looking at the book, Go through and read it about yourself and highlight it Mm. and make notes of this is me and Mm. this isn't me. Like I'm in the 20 percent here. I'm part of the minority or like this is why I got upset the other day. And if both people do that, when you go back through it, you're getting a personalized tour of your spouse's heart and mind Mm. in how they think and feel about money. Mm. And suddenly now you're doing two things. You're understanding yourself and why you're kind of reacting in certain ways, what's under the surface, and you're understanding what's mattering to your spouse in ways that they probably couldn't articulate before. Mm. Once we've seen in general, once you kind of understand and you go, oh, wow, like it's legitimate. Like Mm -hmm. they're just different. Mm suddenly you have empathy for each other yeah. and suddenly it doesn't like solve everything but suddenly it allows you to come together and go you know what <clears throat> you're right we haven't had a lot of family time but i'm i'm a little worried about how many times that you know we've been eating out right and so how about we do this tonight get the chinese food and next week why don't we like clear the calendar and make sure that we have a family night that's you, free. You address both of your yeah, concerns. Exactly. That's good. That's good. And that's just uh, that's just a couple of the tips. That's just a little yeah. of the insight in yeah. your book. So, uh, where can people pick up the book or whatever? Any you guys are doing? anywhere. And um, and the the website that we created. There's an assessment. There's some other things on oh, there so, that okay. might be you fun. Got some tools, yeah, right? is thriveandloveandmoney.com. Thrive and love. And Thrive in love and, and money. dot com. Money. Yeah. dot com. In that order. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's actually comes together, but yes. <laughs> Great. Thanks for taking the time to put this together, do the research, and to share a little bit with us at Life Today. Thank you. 